In this A-level accounting video, we'll be studying the topic of inventory valuation. This is a really important topic. So why does inventory need to be valued correctly? In order to ensure accuracy in the financial statements, it's important to value inventory accurately and correctly. And this is because the financial statements include closing inventory, in other words, inventory at the end of the financial year, in two places. Firstly, in the cost of sales calculation, which therefore affects the value of both gross profit and profit for the year. And secondly, in the current assets section of the statement of financial position, therefore affecting the value of total assets. In other words, if the inventory value is wrong, then both the profit and asset figures reported in the financial statements will also be wrong. How is inventory valued? At the end of the financial year, a stock take is done. This involves counting all the inventory in the warehouse and the shop. The total inventory in pounds is calculated by multiplying the number of items in inventory by the inventory value of one item. This calculation is done for every type of product and then the inventory values of each product are added up to calculate a total. We'll have a look at an example later in the video. Let's focus on how we determine the inventory value of one item. There's a rule that we must follow. It states that, the, that valuing inventory must be at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Let's have a look at an example of this. Focusing on the kettle then. The cost of one kettle was nine pounds and its net realizable value £7.50. The kettle would be valued at £7.50 because this is the lower of the two values. In other words, we look at the cost, £9, and the net realizable value, £7.50, and simply choose the lower of the two values to be the kettle's inventory value. Please remember that this rule is really important and you do need to learn it and be able to state it and use it. So what are the terms in this rule? Let's look at cost and a net realisable value and make sure we understand exactly what they mean. Cost refers to the cost of buying the item from the supplier, including any delivery costs of bringing the goods to their current location. Net realisable value is a calculated figure. Notice that it's often abbreviated to NRV. It refers to the actual or estimated selling price of the item, less any costs that have been incurred to get the goods to the customer in a saleable condition. These costs include things like repair costs, delivery costs and advertising costs, although you could come across other types of costs as well which you would need to take into account in your calculation. I hope you're enjoying this video. There are lots of study resources available to A-level accounting students on our website www.studytheeasyway.com. These include topic videos like the one that you're watching now, as well as worksheets with answers, multiple choice quizzes with immediate feedback and scores, and lots of revision resources too. Let's have a look now at an example. A business is holding in inventory a chair that cannot be sold due to damage. It would normally be sold for £100. The chair cost £75 when it was bought from the supplier and it will cost £17 to repair. Once repaired, it will be sold for £80. What is the correct inventory value of the chair? Questions like this can look quite confusing because there's lots of different numbers that are included in the information supplied. But if we follow a step-by-step -step process, it's actually straightforward to determine the correct inventory value. I've laid out the steps here, and the information from the question is shown at the top of the slide for reference. In step one, we'll calculate the net realizable value. This is calculated as the estimated sales price minus the repair costs. The estimated sales price is £80. Notice that this is the selling price after the chair has been repaired, 
it's not the normal selling price for an undamaged chair of £100. So please be careful to identify the correct selling price. The repair cost to £17, giving us a net realisable value of £63. In step two, we write down the cost. The chair cost £75 when it was bought from the supplier. In step three, we compare the cost and the net realisable value and identify which one of those two figures is the lowest. So the net realisable value of £63 is lower than the cost of £75. And then finally, we can state in step four what the inventory value is. The inventory value of the chair is £63. Let's have a look now at example two. A business has 25 tables in inventory. They cost £40 each. 21 of these tables are undamaged and will be sold for £65 each, and the other four are damaged. It will cost £80 in total to mend the four tables, and once mended, they will be sold for £50 each. The question asks, what is the total inventory value of the 25 tables? Now, when you have a question like this, it's really important to look at the undamaged tables and the damaged tables separately, and each will have their own inventory value calculated. And then finally, we'll calculate the total inventory value by adding these together. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I find it useful to use a table of information to calculate the inventory values in a question like this. Otherwise, it's quite easy to get into a muddle. I'll show you how I use the table now. To start with, we put in the quantities in the first column. There are 21 undamaged tables in the top row and four damaged tables in the second row, with a total of 25 tables. Let's have a look now at the undamaged tables. Each has a cost of £40 and there are 21 of them giving a total cost of £840. For the net realisable value, the estimated, or sorry, the actual or estimated selling price is £65. Again, multiplying by the quantity of 21 gives a total of £1,365. The lowest, therefore, is identified by comparing the cost to the net realisable value and seeing that the cost is the lower of the two. The inventory value of the 21 undamaged tables is therefore £840. Let's turn our attention now to the four damaged tables. Again, each had a cost of £40, giving us a total of £160. The net realisable value here has to be calculated. The estimated sales proceeds when the damaged tables have been repaired is £50 each. And there are four of them, so that gives us £200. From that, we deduct the repair cost of £80, giving us a net realisable value of £120. This time, when we compare the cost and the net realisable value, you can see that the net realisable value is the lowest of the two figures, and therefore that will be the inventory value of the damaged tables. So in the final column, I've noted that the inventory value of the damage tables is £120. Finally, then, we can calculate the total inventory value by adding these two figures together. 840 plus 120 is an inventory value of £960. And that answers the question. Sometimes exam questions ask you to determine the impact on gross profit of a change to an inventory value. For example, assume that in the last example, the 25 tables had all been valued in the draft financial statements at cost. In other words, 25 tables times by the cost of £40 is £1,000. However, it's now been identified that the inventory value should have been £960, as in the last example. So what is the impact of this revaluation on gross profit? In order to illustrate this, I've made up some figures for the other figures that we need to include in this part of the income statement, revenue, opening inventory and purchases. So I've just made those up in order to illustrate the point that I'm going to be making. So using this draft income statement format, 
Let's calculate the cost of sales figure. Can you remember the formula for doing that? Cost of sales is calculated as opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. 1,500 plus 4,000 minus 1,000 gives a cost of sales of £4,500 and therefore a gross profit of 1,500. Now let's have a look at what happens to these calculations when we replace that closing inventory figure, which we've now determined is incorrect. We're going to replace it with £960. Just bear in mind what the cost of sales and gross profit figures are in the current example. So let's replace the £1,000 closing inventory figure by £960 and check what the impact of that is on the cost of sales figure. You can see immediately that you get a higher cost of sales figure, calculated as the opening inventory plus the purchase minus the closing inventory, which is now 960. As a result, the gross profit is now lower by £40, giving a gross profit of £1,460. In other words, if the value of closing inventory decreases, as it has done here, then the value of cost of sales increases and the gross profit decreases. Sometimes it's handy to remember that little pattern. The opposite would be true as well, of course. If closing inventory increase, then cost of sales decreases and gross profit would increase. So a useful little rule to remember. On our website, www.studytheeasyway.com, Subscribers can select topics of their choice by clicking on the easy to follow menus. This gives a choice or a whole range of resources that are linked to that particular topic. A full range of topic videos covering everything that you need to know. Worksheets for practice which include fully explained answers and multiple choice quizzes which give you an immediate score and feedback. Please check out our website in order to see more freebie videos and other resources and also to check out subscription options. You can also find us on social media. Our Instagram page is updated regularly with free uh, check your knowledge uh, questions and our other web social media sites are updated regularly too. Please check out our website as well where you can find out more. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been useful.